everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount their wings as with eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and they shall not faint. That is somebody's testimony. I say that is your testimony. I say that is your testimony. Raise your right and say, My heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, 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 I declare and I decree, I declare that I decree because the Lord fainted not, I will not faint this year. Because the Lord does not grow weary, I shall not grow weary this year. Because the Lord does not know fainting, nothing around me will faint. My spiritual life will not faint. My business will not faint. My family will not faint. In the name of Jesus, my passion for God will not faint. My finance will not faint. I will not grow weary serving God. I will not grow weary running to the sanctuary of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Lord God Almighty, you are the one that gives power to the faith, to the weak. I will not be weak. Lord, you say those that have no might, you increase their strength. I walk in the energy of the spirit. I am increasing in strength this year. Mental strength, emotional strength, psychological strength, financial strength, marital strength. In the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus, I am increasing in strength. 2024, I mount up wings as eagle. I mount up wings as eagle. I rise above the storms of 2024. I rise above the storms of 2024. Somebody raise a voice this morning. I rise above the storms, financial storms, marital storms, health storms. I rise above the storms of 2024. In the name of Jesus, I rise above the storms of 2024 in the name of Jesus I rise above the storms I am an eco Christian in 2024 I'm an eco Christian in 2024 Lord I thank you I give you praise I give you glory speak to me O Lord speak your word to my heart in Jesus mighty name we are praying somebody say a good amen let me look at your neighbor say neighbor you are an eco Christian this year you will rise above the storms of 2024 financial storms economic storms business storms marital storms health storms spiritual storms physical storms family storms you are rising above all the storms somebody shout amen amen you may be seated this morning matthew's gospel chapter number six hallelujah fasting that commands results fasting that commands results fasting that commands results matthew's gospel Chapter number six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we need to fast or open up the year. Can I tell you something? Emergency. Emergency does not it is not gender sensitive. Emergency is what? It's not you will not say because you are a woman or because you are a man. Because you are a child. Emergency is not age sensitive. Emergency is not gender sensitive. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Are you in Matthew's gospel? Chapter number 6. Let's read quickly this morning. Fasting that commands results. Verse number 16. Hallelujah. Matthew's gospel chapter number 6. Verse number 16. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But be thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the, the Father which is in secret. Father, which yet is secret, shall reward thee openly. And the church will say, Amen. Quickly, this morning, as a way of introduction, as we share, that there are is. In the word of God. And there are things in the word of God. 
word of God and there are wings in the word of God. That if you look at the Bible, it tell you if if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, I will do this. If you do this, I will do this. And when the Bible begins to talk about if, it's providing us alternative. Like saying, if I like, I will go. If I like, I will not. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are a lot of ifs. If you read the chapter 28, what did he say? If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord of God, observe to do his commandment, I will cause this blessing to come to you. If. Hallelujah. Job chapter number 36 verse 11. What is it? If you obey and serve, you will spend your days in prosperity. Then in the Bible also, there are winds. And when the Bible begins to talk about when, it's talking about time allotted to do something. A set time to do something. Are you with me this, this morning? Hallelujah. Time allotted to do something. And I want to give every one of us assignment. When you finish resting after the service, take time and read the book of Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 6, from 1 to, to the end. There are three winds here. He said, when you give, one, when you pray, two, when you fast, three. You see that? When you do what? When you give. When you pray and when you what fast, so talking about what there are time that uh, when, 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 when you look at this scripture is describing to us the lifestyle of a believer. The lifestyle of who of the believer. A believer ought to do what give. A believer ought to do what pray. A believer ought to do what fast. Amen. I say amen. When you give. And if you check all of them, he said, when you do these things, make sure you don't do it in the flesh. Do it secretly. He said, your father that sits in secret will do what? Reward you openly. So there are secret activities that provoke open reward. And fasting is one of it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. And if you look at the scripture again, you discover that the kingdom of God will operate. The, the, the kingdom of God will function in function with keys. Just follow me as we look at something. I know some of, we have been fasting, some of us have been fasting, but God is going to give us another understanding so that we know why we need to fast this season. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus came to them. We have read that scripture today at one of our teachings in 2023. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16. If you did the reverse number three, say, What do men say I am? They said, You are John the Baptist, you are Elijah the prophet, or you are one of the prophets. He said, Right, who do you say I am? And the Bible said, Peter looked at him and said, Thou art what? Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said, Simon Bajona, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father. Has revealed this to you, and he went ahead to say, Peter, upon this rock, I will do what I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Therefore, anything you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, anything you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I, I get getting that this one. Hallelujah! I give to you the keys of the kingdom, anything you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, anything you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Please touch your number and say, pay attention this morning. Now, there are a few things I want to bring to your notice. We have already dealt with the issue of Peter answering, Jesus, you are Christ. But there's something he said. He said, Peter, upon this rock, Simon Bajona, upon this rock, I will build my church. And what will happen? The gates of hell shall not prevail. Which means, the church of Jesus Christ is not to be built based on religion. The church of Jesus Christ is not to be built by I feel like. The church of Jesus Christ must be built on the revelation of Christ as the Son of God. Church, are we talking now? Every true church, every true denomination,
denomination in the body of Christ must be built not on any other platform but what? on the revelation of the sonship of Jesus. So anything you are preaching outside that Jesus is the Son of God, you are on your own. It may look like the gospel, but it's not the gospel. He said, upon this revelation, I will do what? I will build my church. So the church must be built based on what? On the revelation of Jesus being the Son of God. And he said, I will give to you keys. The kingdom of God operates on keys. Listen, what are keys in the kingdom? Keys. Keys are, okay, let me, in the natural, when you have key, what happens? You must locate what? A door. Every key is to a door. And any door that opens gives you what? Access. Are you with me? So are you with me this morning? So, so the key, kingdom keys are kingdom principles. Kingdom keys are what? Kingdom principles. What are keys of the kingdom? They are kingdom um, revelation truths. They are revelation truths from the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Keys are revelation truths. Revelation of the truth of God's word. And I discovered something that keys in the kingdom unlock certain possibilities and realities. There are certain possibilities you will not be able to access until there's a key. There's a revelation. There's an insight. And please take note of this. That he didn't say, I will give you a key. Why am I emphasizing on this? If you check people today, they just got a revelation on one aspect or one side of the gospel. They start criticizing the other side of the gospel. No, it's wrong. Are you answering? That's why today you see a lot of people, they are, they are so much into teaching ministry. Then when another ministry or pastor is operating in the prophetic, they begin to do what? Attack that one. Well, what is he doing? Why is he calling somebody's name? Why is he calling somebody's phone number? Why is he mentioning this? this? No. The key you are holding is what? The teaching is a, is a, is a key of teaching ministry. Somebody is holding the key to what? Prophetic ministry. Someone is holding the key to prayer ministry. Someone is holding the key to, you know, so if you look at every kingdom principle, every kingdom principle is a key. Faith is key in the kingdom. Prayer is key in the kingdom. Love is key in the kingdom. Forgiveness is key in the kingdom. Obedience is key in the kingdom. Are you going to say? Glory be to God. And, and fasting is a key in the kingdom. Fasting is what? A key in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Church, are you following me this morning? So, there are certain kingdom realities and certain kingdom possibilities you will not assess until you apply the key of fasting. Can I quickly say this? Because some people say, you see, we teach grace. We are grace teachers. We teach new creation reality. Listen to me and listen to me very well. Fasting is not, is not a teaching of law. And it's not the teaching of grace. It's what? Kingdom principle. It's a key in the kingdom. Somebody say amen. Did you get me up to this point? We're looking at fasting that commands what? Result. Let's move on. Then, if fasting is a key, then what is fasting? What is fasting? Biblical fasting is refraining from food. Or water. Or both. For a spiritual purpose. Refraining from what? You refrain yourself. You deny yourself of food or water. And at times, both of them. For what? For spiritual purpose. That is fasting. You refrain or you deny yourself eating food or drinking water. Or re you, you deny yourself both of them for spiritual purpose. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Quickly, I want to let you know that there are two categories of fast. How many categories? One is corporate fast. One is personal fast. Like what we are doing right now, that we call for 40 days fast as a church. is what? Corporate fast. Now, when it comes, the pastor or the head or the person that has been instructed to, to, to call for that fast, we now tell everybody why we are fasting. But when it comes to personal fast, the purpose of the fasting is just as the name goes, it's personal. It's to you. You know why you are engaging the fast. So we have one 
corporate fast and uh, personal fast. If you read the scripture, you see it again and again. The popular one in Second Chronicles chapter number twenty, when three nations came against Judah, what did Jehoshaphat do? He called the whole Judah and said, "We are going on what fast? Glory be to God. That is corporate fast. Are you in that? And they fasted, and the, the word of the Lord came through Anania. This battle that is before you, you don't need to fight. Just mobilize yourself and praise God. Are you understand? But there's a corporate fast." There's a personal fast. There are three kinds of fast quickly this morning. Outside two categories of fast, there are three kinds of fast. Number one, there's what we call absolute fast. What do I call it? I didn't hear you. What do I call it? Absolute fast. In absolute fast, you don't drink water. You don't eat food for a period of time. That is what we popularly call what? Dry fasting. You don't take water. You don't take food. Glory be to God for some for a period of time depending on the instruction given to you and depending on the choice you make because fasting can be by what instruction god instructs you don't eat wait on me are you gonna say then you can make up your mind and say no you didn't hear any voice you didn't have you didn't have, uh, 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 hear, uh, have any dream you just woke up and say i made up my mind tomorrow monday i am going on fast so fasting could be what by instruction or by what? By choice. Can I hear you say by instruction? by instruction? And by choice. Hallelujah. So absolute fast is what? The fasting you do with what? Without water, without what? No, for we call it dry fasting. Or dry fast. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Like the one that happened to Moses. God called him up to the mountain. He was there, no food for 40 days. Wow. Glory be to God. For how many days? 40 days. But if you read the account of Moses, something happened. Fasting is not a joke. It's not, it's not for joke. It's, it's, it's a key that opens certain dimension of kingdom realities and possibilities. Two major things that happened to Moses. Remember that two times he went up to the mountain to spend 40 days with the Lord. One, one of the things that one of the journeys he went, he came with the Ten Commandments. Am I right? One of the journeys he, he went, he returned back, and the Bible said the level of glory that Moses contracted in the presence of God, the children of Israel could not what could not behold him. The bow, the glory of God was coming like bowls of light. So when Moses was coming down the mountain, they couldn't recognize Moses. They started running. Moses had to go back. They called the elders. They had to go back and prepare something like mask, a veil. Anytime Moses need to speak to the children of Israel, he put on the veil so that the veil will reduce the power of the glory. So the place of fasting is a place where we compact glory. The place of the fast of fasting is a place where we enter into some 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 mysteries of the kingdom of God. He was able to receive the Ten Commandments and brought it down for the people. When you go to God in fasting, there are certain things you receive for yourself, for your family, and for your generation. And I pray that this season you will receive something. That amen is not sounding like people like the church. I say this season you will receive something. We are not just fasting because we want to increase activities. There's something you need to receive for 2024. There's something you need to receive this 2024 and it will enter your hand. I say uh, you enter your hand. As you follow this fasting of this season, I mean faithfully, something will enter your hand. Something will enter your hand. Something will enter your family. You will receive something for yourself. You receive something for your family. You receive something for your generation. And you shout a better amen. Hallelujah. Someone asked me, Pastor, what of you? <coughs> I have gone, I have not gone on 40 days dry fasting. You know, at times some people look at pastors, and at times we pastors, we don't want to tell you people the truth. At times we'll be doing as if we are Superman. Pastor Elijah, I've not gone on 40 days dry fasting. This one that I'm not fat, if I go that one, maybe you will be carrying me like boom. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've gone, the highest I've gone in my Christian journey is three days dry fasting. No food, no water for three days, 72 hours. That is the highest I've gone. Hallelujah. And for some times now, I've not gone, but I've been doing other kind of other kinds of fastings. Are you understand? I've not gone beyond three days. 
and I even advise people when it is dry fasting, please don't go beyond three days. But if God gives you grace, some people go up to seven days. Some people go more than seven days without food, without water. But if God has not given you that grace, don't try it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Moses was able to do that because he was under the glory cloud of God. So in that, in that realm, anything that called food, hunger, this material oppression ceases in that realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've gone three days dry fasting. I have done that a lot in my Christian work. Not just as a pastor, but as a believer. I've gone, gone on three days dry fasting. Number two. The, the number two kind of fast is what? It's called normal fast. What is normal fast? You go without food for days, but you drink a lot of water. Two, you can go without food and water for some days. Hallelujah. No, for some hours, then you resume again. Are you going to say? Normal, can I explain again? Normal fast, you go without what? Food. Or for what? For days. But you drink a lot of water. You go without food for days or drink a lot of water or you go without food and water for some hours and now break it and continue again now from this explanation it is very obvious that what we are doing this january is what normal fast because we are not going with food and water for some hours then we take and come and continue again so that is what called normal fast are you getting me i should explain again uh -huh. Normal fast, you go without food, but you drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. Then um, you can go without food and without water for some hours. You come back again, you break, you continue. Hallelujah. The third kind of fast is called partial fast. What do we call it? Partial fast. This involves giving up particular food and drink and activity. Particular food, drink, or activity for an extended period of time you give up what a particular kind of food drink and activities for what a an extended period of time example is what what daniel did in babylon they came into babylon they recruited them to serve nebuchadnezzar and in the king's palace they give them special food are you with me so daniel looked at the food and said no what we came here is more than food. What we came here for is more than food. Ariok, can you come? This powerful food they serve us here. We don't want to eat. Give us only vegetables. We are ready to what? Take vegetables. Not that the food they were giving to them is not good, though, but just made a choice. So, partial fast is that fast you deny yourself what? What you like. Particular food you like drink you like certain activities you like for a period of time but at the end of the day you know Ariok was afraid he said after sometimes when you people come to serve the king so that the king will not say why are these people looking lean and these are looking fat but god you see fasting is powerful when you have understanding At, throughout the time daniel and his and his company served served uh, uh, the kings in Babylon, it was never recorded that they were looking different from other people. Hallelujah. They were not looking emaciated. Glory be to God. Even if you emaciate, you will bounce back. Are you with me this morning, church? Are we sharing together? Are you getting understanding here? So you can fast, not only fast, has also nothing to do. At times, it's not only food and not only drink. It could be certain activities you love. Maybe you love to watch television. Every time you are with your phone, watching movie, watching movie, one movie or the other, season one, season two, season three, season four, hallelujah. All of a sudden, you say, no, from this day to this day, I am shutting down this movie I love. I want to seek the face of God in prayer. I want to seek the face of God in fasting, in studying the word of God, in worship. What happened? You are, you are engaged yourself in what we call Pasha fast. Some people you sleep. You can fast or sleep. Partial fast is better. You like to sleep eight hours, seven hours. So sleep and sleep and sleep. You say, no, I'm going to deny myself sleep. I'm going to be awake in the night, worshiping God, praying. It's what called partial fast. Are you going to say? 
they will like a particular sport. Now, African Cup of Nations have started. You are the one you must like this one, you like you must watch the you know all the players, you know all the UEFA, you know everything. He said no from so 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 time to so so time, no soccer, no football. I want to stay with God. It's called what Pasha Fast. Somebody say amen. amen. Did you get me up to this point? Are we moving together? So that you catch understanding of what we are doing. Now we're looking at the duration of fast. Glory be to God. If you check through the Bible, you see that they are littered, littered everywhere. Some people fast for a day. Some people fast for um, a day that is 24 hours. Some people fast for 3 days. Some people fast for 7 days. Some 21 days. Some 40 days. And even more. Some people fast for 400 days. I mean 100 days. Some people fast throughout the whole year. They are fasting. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The one I have not understood is this 6 to... Uh, 12. Amen. I've not really understood that one. For a mature Christian that is serious with God. Except God give you, gives you instruction. Let it just be 6 to 12. But that you took decision to fast. Because 6 to 12, some of us we are still doing domestic work. We have not taken breakfast. So we cannot even call that one fast. Am I saying the truth? Some days you are washing clothes and you are doing uh, court duty in the house. You have not eaten. And it's 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Quickly this morning, why do we fast? That is a big, big question. Why do we fast? Number one, we fast in command to God's word. We fast how? In command to God's word. Please, I want you to know that fasting is not a suggestion. Fasting is not I, I choose to. You know, these days, a lot of believers, they choose what they believe in scripture. They choose the one they will not believe. Hallelujah. We fast in obedience to God's word. Look at Joel chapter number 2. Everybody move to Joel. The book of Joel chapter number 2. Hallelujah. It's your year of notable miracles. I say it's your year of notable miracles. Joel chapter number 2 verse 12. Anybody there? What did he say? Therefore also now say the Lord. Turn ye even to me with all your heart. And fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of evil you hear that God is commanding them to do what to turn to him in what in fasting so why we fast is that we fast what in obedience to God's command it's not in negotiation are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not a negotiation. And can I tell you something? Obedience is very powerful. Touch your neighbor. Tell your neighbor obedience is very powerful. I didn't hear you. Obedience is very, very powerful. Obedience is very, very powerful. Obedience. Can I quickly say this? Look up here, everybody. You know, in the, in the world today, there are a group of people we call sport analysts. Do you agree with me? Yes. AFCON started yesterday. or started today. Yesterday. Yesterday, that is African Cup of Nations. Glory be to God. Now, if you check before the match, after the match, you see a group of a group of people in different radio station, television station, doing what? Analyzing the match. Amen. They call them what? Football analysts. There are also people that call political analysts. We just had our election 2023 February match. Before the election, during the election, after the election, the same thing, different station. They are analyzing, you see, uh, this political party they didn't do this, this one they didn't happen, and all of that. There are also a group of people we call economic analysts. What do we call them? Yes. Those ones, what did they do? Oh, they sit down, you know, the GDP of the nation will go down, there will be hunger, there will be inflation rise, uh, the production will increase. They are analyzing all those things. Please, can I tell you something? When it comes to the word of God, you don't analyze the word of God. You obey the word of God. Church, are you hearing me? You don't do what? You don't sit down to begin to analyze the word of God. You obey the word of God. Why do I say so? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. What obedience will teach you in your life will be more than a lifetime of Bible discussion. Obedience to God's instruction will teach you more about God than sitting down to be discussing Bible. Can I quickly say this this morning that there are certain
command there are certain commands you will not understand until you obey first there are certain commands god's divine command you will never understand until you do what obey first and obedience unlocks understanding obedience does what unlocks understanding and one of the ways we worship god is through obedience obedience is also one of the way we worship god can somebody say amen i give you a practical example peter they confronted jesus jesus we discovered that you're operating in our environment but you don't pay tax it's tax time give us your tax jesus looked at them said peter come here get down to the sea and do what throw cast your hook the first fish open the mouth bring out the complete that money is not fake money it's not fake money that money had the head the the the, the image of caesar so it's people that say they don't believe in miracle money that is miracle money that is what god will give you miracle money oh you are not saying it, but i say god will give you miracle money this year i say god will give you miracle money some of you you will remove all the money in your cup cupboard one as you open it you see another money inside i'm telling you the truth i'm not going to that but for people they say there's nothing like miracle money except this thing we are reading in the bible is a liar but listen peter peter has been into fishing for a long time and i don't think he has had that experience before so he would have been asking jesus master i think uh, uh, following the way things are i think you're supposed to come matthew and send matthew that is a tax collector to, uh, collector to go to the bank and get money let's pay these people glory be to god he did not analyze he just turned obeyed and he did that and that thing was sorted out there are certain things in life you will never understand until you do what you obey first but many of us were ready to explain explain god said go and do this you're explaining you see god if like this like this no look at moses 